reviewing few uh, bicuspid valves with you. Uh, you can see this is a uh, rather uh, moderately degenerated valve. You can see a lot of calcification here, a thickened valve, there are calcium all alongside here, a very thickened, calcified, extroverted uh, edge of the bicuspid valve, and obviously we went ahead and uh, uh, replaced this. This is a very critical uh, tight um, bicuspid valve. We can see the uh, remnant of Raffae here, but uh, um, as you can see, this is not easy to identify on echocardiogram preoperatively to say if this is bicuspid or not because it's so degenerated that actually uh, it is kind of hard to, uh, to uh, identify the anatomy. Um, this is another bicuspid valve. Uh, also, you can see, um, you know, about moderately to severely degenerated. And this one was uh, replaced. That one had some aortic regurgitation. Um, and so is the, the, this one. Uh, the reason for regur regurgitation is not only it gets uh, thickened and calcified and doesn't open, it is uh, stiff enough that doesn't gently uh, co-opt together in the middle. So there's a hole left open and that uh, regurgitates uh, back into the ventricle. Um, I particularly put this uh, slide up because I wanted you to look, to s with a quick look at this valve, one might have a little difficult time to say this is a bicuspid valve. But the experienced eyes, they pick this up every single time that this is a bicuspid valve. You can see the fusion of this uh, two leaflets here and uh, when it actually opens and closes uh, this is a, a true bicuspid valve and this is actually one of the most common type and these are not very easy to identify uh, during echocardiography uh, and many times we have seen uh, with the limited view of the echocardiogram across here that actually uh, is called that this is a tri-leaflet valve. And sometimes we ourselves uh, in the operating room on transesophageal echo, uh, we have a tough time to decide whether it's a bicuspid or not. But intraoperatively, uh, it basically is almost 100% uh, 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 successful to say if the valve is bicuspid or not. Um, this is a tri-leaflet valve. The commissures were completely developed all the way, and this was a very sclerotic uh, tri-leaflet aortic valve that uh, it was thin, and the uh, calcium has uh, gone deep enough that the full thickness of a very thin, delicate tri-leaflet valve in a TAT patient that needed to be replaced. Um, again, uh, this is a, a typical, uh, a true uh, bicuspid valve that is calcified and it is thin. Uh, sometimes you see these leaflets are so thick and the calcium uh, involvement is also so thick, but sometimes you see that the, the full thickness of the leaflet is calcified, but because it is such a thin valve, uh, the uh, appearance uh, looks like so. And of course, patient has a large uh, ascending aneurysm. This is a typical uh, bicuspid ascending aneurysm. As you can see, it's uh, bulged out, uh, and uh, it, if it's not resected in the first operation, then patient will come back uh, five, ten years if they don't get in trouble while waiting uh, for a subsequent operation, which is a little difficult second time, and uh, it would be a uh, much better situation to have it resected uh, the first time. One patient we had here, uh, there are two interesting things to show you. As I said, homograph does reject and does degenerate. And the replacement of the rejected cell and degenerated cells is with calcium. So you can see a homograph when it is used, uh, first of all, it is uh, almost in most of cases is a limited half of the aorta resection, and it is degenerated and decalcified. Uh, and also the leaflets start calcifying, and they degenerate, and patient develops uh, leakage back. So they rather become very inefficient uh, leaflets. 
That's what happens to homograph down the line. Now, this patient happened to be only eight years after uh, insertion. Uh, the second interesting thing here is you can see the diameter of ascending aorta is measured here 3.5 centimeter. Well, 3.5 centimeter is normal for a male. Um, however, uh, uh, as we discussed yesterday, that uh, the images, the appropriate images of the aorta should be uh, obtained during systole, not diastole. And you can see a, a big, uh, large volume of contrast in the left ventricle here, and this is called diastole. So during diastole, we know the diameter of the aorta is rather uh, small. And then next image, this is during systole, as heart is pumping out this contrast out, you can see the aorta is enlarged to 4.4 centimeter. So, uh, so this patient had, uh, this TAD patient, I should say, had his, uh, more than half of his aneurysm left behind, and it was only this part replaced with the homograph uh, eight years uh, ago, and uh, um, this is only an eight-year-old homograph that is degenerated and patient needed surgery. Uh, so for his redo surgery, he had uh, the entire ascending aorta replaced, and the valve was uh, replaced, and root was uh, removed, and uh, had a modified root remodeling. A uh, very small remnant of the uh, uh, homograph was left. Uh, that was decalcified, and the uh, patient had uh, rather good results. Uh, this is another... Um, patient who uh, had bicuspid uh, and TAD syndrome uh, in the past had uh, 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 his root replaced, as you can see, um, and the rest of the ascending aorta was not replaced. And, and on this uh, a 3D CT image, you can see the rest of the ascending aorta had enlarged uh, to about uh, uh, um, a little over five centimeter, and very active athletic guy. And his uh, redo surgery, what we did was uh, we, on the circuitry arrest, uh, we did a hemi-arch connection of a Dacron graft down to uh, this uh, rather normal looking root. And uh, he also was able to go home in three days. Um, this is his CT. Uh, after this operation was done. All of this is Dacron, and the attachment was from here down to his normal root. 